New video, new challenge. This time we've got a masterpiece from Capablanca. It's Black's turn to play here and eventually win this game. Are you able to guess the next correct move? Now, even if the engine declares this position as a plus one for Black, it's in fact not so easy to convert because of the bishops being on different colors. Now one thing you should always do in an endgame versus one bishop is put all your pawns on a different color than your opponent's bishop so that they can be safe from any attacks. So, it's Black's move to play here, and let's see if you can spot the first winning move for Black. For those of you thinking we should push the Black pawn over here to b5 to try and open up this bishop's diagonal, pretty good start. So let's say White captures, then you capture back, but now what? White would play king to b2, and you've got no real way of promoting that pawn because white is never going to let you push to a3. The king to b4 by black can either be met by bishop to d1, check, or pawn to c3, check. And your only solution as black is to try and go after the other pawns. Instead, in the game, Capablanca played the move pawn to a3. White king then moved to b3, and maybe now you're expecting black to push the b5 pawn with the pawn being pinned and can't take it. After white takes on e3, you take on c4. And this looks like a more promising position for black than the initial position that we saw. But instead, Capablanca wanted to win this one in style, so he played a brilliant move. Now let me know in the comments if you could see this move coming. The brilliant move that he played was bishop takes on c4. Now why is that move so brilliant? Well, because at first the sacrifice it seems pointless for black, because after white takes and black pushes to a2, white can move bishop to e5 and defend the promotion square. So in reality, promoting here is unstoppable for black. Another key aspect we can learn from this endgame is to create multiple threats at once. Even if we're one square away from promotion, this doesn't mean we can't play on the king side and that we should focus all our attention on the queen side. Now keeping that in mind, here black is going to start to push his h and g pawns, and white wouldn't be able to stop them from promoting. h4 is played by black. If white responds with b3, preparing to take our pawn the next turn, we're simply going to ignore that and play pawn to g3. White needs to take our g pawn, because if he captures the a pawn instead, black is going to move over here to g2, and white can't stop the promotion anymore because the d4 square is protected by our pawn. So, pawn takes on g3, and now another brilliant move by Capablanca, pawn to h3. Not taking back, because here white would capture the a pawn instead, and be able to stop the promotion by playing bishop to h2. No, no, no. Here, white instead pushes to h3, and now promoting is really unstoppable. Pawn to g4 by white, allowing the bishop to control the h2 square. But we don't really care. Black is just going to push that anyway, because one of the two pawns is going to promote next turn. If instead, white tries to defend with king to d3, bringing his king in to help, black is going to respond with pawn to h3. The idea remains the same, creating multiple threats at once. Always keep that in mind. So, white moves king to e3, we move our pawn to g2. If the pawn takes, we see the exact same scenario from last time. Let's say king moves to f3, black would capture. And due to the pawn on h3 defending the g2 square, the white king is not going to arrive in time to stop that promotion. But, going back to the actual game, Capablanca's opponent did not end up making that massive blunder of capturing the Trojan horse. Instead, he takes the a3 pawn. However, this allows black to play pawn to b5. Pawn to c3 by white, stopping pawn to b4 by black. So instead, black moves his king to d5. Now Capablanca centralizes his king and makes sure he's ready to aid both of his attacking flanks. White plays bishop to f2, with the entire purpose of keeping the enemy king tied with defending this c pawn over here. See why I said it's always good practice to put your pawns on a different color than the opponent's bishop? It's not to be forced to keep one piece only for defense. So, if this was your game and you were playing black, what move would you play in this position? The main purpose as black is to create a passed pawn, so I'll let you think about that for a second. Actually, there is multiple ways to win this position. 
due to the fact that black is already two pawns up. The main ones are king to e4, where black gives up the c pawn, but creates a powerful attack on the king side, or you've got bishop to e2, where black plays on the queen side and promotes there. See the importance of having multiple threats at once? Let's analyze both of those options, starting with black king to e4. Now, as I said, black is given the c-pawn in order to promote on the king side. So he can make this move because of this nice little alignment over here with the bishop and the pawn. Now, as you can see, white's king cannot capture either of them or push their own pawn. Also, if you wanted to bring in his king to help, he would have a very long journey to make. After white takes, black would bring his king in even closer. And how do you stop this as white? Well, you could try moving your bishop to e7, trying to cut the h-pawn off from advancing. But black would get even closer to your pawn, moving the king to g2. Bishop to d6 to protect it, and now h4 by black, forcing his way right through. White could play king to b2, and black could respond with pawn to g3. A capture from white, a capture from black, and now the white king is much too far away to stop black's promotion. So white is eventually going to need to give up his bishop, and it's game over for black. Now, let's see how black would win the game if he would move bishop to e2 instead. The main purpose he made that move was to clear the c4 square for his king. Seeing that plan, White would play king to b3 in order to prevent it. The reason we moved our bishop to e2 and not d3 or f1 was especially for this counterattack by white, because black's next move here would be bishop to d1 check, kicking the white king away. If we had moved to either d3 or f1, we wouldn't have a check that would force that. King to b2 and black king to c4. White king moves to c1, attacking our piece, and then we bring in our bishop back to f3. White then moves his king to d2, which cuts us off from the d3 square, while also protecting his pawn. But now, we can create a passed pawn, thus winning the game in this position. We move the black pawn to b4. White captures, black captures, and now white has little to no chance of stopping that pawn. His main defenses are moving the king to c2, which fails, mainly because the promoting square is a light square, and the enemy king cannot place himself on b1 and just shuffle his bishop. Black moves pawn to b3, white moves king to b2, then the black bishop to d5, and we can reroute our king to help the h and g pawns without worrying about the b pawn. White moves the bishop to h4, black king to d3, white bishop to g3, White honestly doesn't have any other move rather than the bishop shuffle. Black moves king to e2, bishop moves to h4. Black king to f3, bishop to g3. King to g2, bishop to e5. Black pawn to h4, and now we see how black is going to force his way all the way to promotion. Bishop goes to f4, black to g3. White captures, black captures, bishop to e3, king to f1. And the only way to stop that is now by giving up the bishop. Another defense white could have tried is bishop to h4, preparing bishop to f6, cutting the king away from advancing while also controlling the b2, but this plan is no good either because of the multiple attacks that black has lined up. Black moves bishop to e4, secures that promotion square. Now white can move bishop to f6, black moves pawn to b3. Now, if white wants to counterattack by playing king to e3 over here, the bishop can really go anywhere. This is how good the position is for black, even to a1. But let's say bishop moves to g2, the black bishop, and you'll see why in a second. White will continue his desperate attack with king to f4 after going after the h pawn. Black king moves to d3 and the white king to g5. Black king then moves to c2 and now black secures the pawn push. Now, white takes on h5, and now can you find the only, the one and only winning move for black in this position? If you said bishop to f3, unfortunately that would just draw the game, and I'll tell you why that is. It's because white would then play king to h4, and even if black would manage to capture white's bishop by pushing his pawn, 
he would also lose his own pawn due to playing h3 from white. So black is forced to take and the game is unfortunately gonna end in a draw. Now, if you were thinking bishop to h3, then congratulations, that is the winning move because it stops the h pawn push from white. So white's gonna have to move the king to g5, black moves pawn to b2, and black would easily win this one being one bishop up. If white would play king to c1 instead, relying on the defense, black could simply shift focus once again. Black moves king to d3, white's king to b2. Black bishop to d5, now defending that pawn, and we saw a similar scenario to this already. I hope you enjoyed this exciting endgame from Capablanca versus Nimzowicz. And if there's one thing that I want you to keep in mind from this video, it's to pay attention to the color of your opponent's bishop, because when he's got only one, you need to start moving all of your pieces to the opposite color squares, just to keep them safe from attacks. Keep that in mind, and have a great day.